Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain, too absorbed in a book to be distracted. dreams of becoming a big t at night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. <laughs> oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charm. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? <laughs> Rollo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. Thomas Gran regretted the second it was made.
The phone booth was brand new, part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. Luca peeked up at the beach. It appeared to be deserted. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. The Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. The path led into a small hollow at the edge. The fence thrummed with a gentle electric. Luca often asked himself what Rolla would, so that he could rule out that option. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs were. One more to go. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left, but the dormant building showed strange signs of life. There was only one way to find out. The water looked almost dizzy. It flowed slowly into the woods. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of <sighs> Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. The sound of footsteps grew louder. The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door into the lab. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous... The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. He found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Mm -hmm. 
Solomon Valentine, current ward of and future successor to the Valentine fortune, huffed as he brushed off his pants. <laughs> Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rollo began to bounce excitedly.
I sat petrified under the weight of the bag. Lolo felt around at the large sack which burdened them. He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. Lolo held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Lucas sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rollo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eye. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Gran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. 